My name is William May, and I'm a managing director for Tech Security Incorporated. It's a global cybersecurity company that works with Fortune 500 enterprises and government entities all around the world. I'm here today to show you a demo on ESOP, which is Enterprise Security in One Framework, a very unique asset solution that TAC has, is bringing to the marketplace. If you're like most enterprises, security leaders, you need to know what your security risk posture is and if it's stable or getting worse. Having this information at your fingertips is challenging though, given the myriad of tools that most organizations must use and the sheer volume of security data that we produce. And I've seen this in spades across many companies globally. Today, I wanna to show you a really innovative way to understand your security risk posture in real time with a solution that gives you a top line view so you can communicate with your teams, business units, executives, and boards. And the ability to drill down and find out exactly which vulnerabilities are driving that risk. The solution I'm showing you again is called ESOF VMP Form Tech Security. And what you're looking at right now is the main screen dashboard when you log in, what you're looking at. Uh, it's very colorful, but it's also very impactful. Um, what you're seeing are the risk ratings, um, you'll see here, I can show you with the mouse, uh, the overall risk against the various assets within the enterprise. Um, you can see to the right, its status as it's moved through the months. You can see going back to September, October, November, December, January, February, where this risk rating has evolved to. Um, you can also get the stats, and this is how the assets are categorized, critical, high, medium, low, and information-based. So these are all loaded together, um, properly categorized um, within your enterprise. And then you'll see, as in this uh, demo will show you, what they roll up against. Uh, primarily in this case, you can see primarily that 13,628 of them are infrastructure. And then you'll have uh, 206 that are web applications. So it gives you a good feel for what you're looking at. You may be curious as to uh, the ticker across the top. These are various domains and campaigns that are being run and tracked throughout the enterprise. Um, there's ways to drill down into these um, as we can show later, but this is really quite honestly a, uh, a good impactful dashboard for executives, uh, for the security team to really help them make the decisions. So when you take a look at what you're seeing here, I can also provide additional views. You're gonna see from a legend perspective here, your assets are in white. This is your white line, okay? Critical, which is your deep red. High, which is your red, medium yellow, low green, and then information-based. And again, now it's broken out from this view, which is it all, which is everything together, as to how it looks against the criticality, which you might see up here, and its trend that it's had. If I continue down the, the main screen, you're going to see the total number of assets, critical, high, medium, low. You're going to see the architecture type where all, you'll know, see the total 13,846, global applications 12, web 206, and here's your infrastructure number. Again, another historical trend that allows you to see where these things are. Uh, from their perspective, you can see the same type of legend again that you can refer to but it's also pretty dynamic in that you can see it from a monthly or quarterly or even an annual, which won't have much information right now because it's, uh, this has been loaded from uh, 2019, but you have that ability. And this application actually has the ability to hold five years worth of data. And that to me is pretty ro relevant and robust in that most applications don't have that type of capability. They usually keep uh, a couple quarters worth this in TAC, it's holding five. So you can always go back and see where the trends are, see how the campaigns are going, see where you are from a critical to a high perspective or medium to low um, in the entire uh, campaign. In this area, you're gonna see um, your top 10 uh, vulnerabilities. You have the ability to do all sorts of different things, but these have been tagged specifically for the demo purposes. You can see them up against infrastructure. You can see the actions that they may have. I can actually click on this to get the full detail. There's not a lot of detail for this one, but you can see um, who was created by the, the tag it has. And it's labeled, labeled up against infrastructure. You can see the risk meter, which I won't wait for at this moment. 
here we go. And see where that one asset lies, where it was first uh, brought in, which would have been October of last year, where it's trending, it's in a low area. Um, so again, you, like I said before, you have the ability to drill down. I'm going back a screen, so give me half a second. You can see that a lot of the um, screens look very similar. They are literally um, a template that we try to take all the information and use it um, in repetitive formats so that it's easy to read, easy to see. Going back to the dashboard. Okay, as you can see, it's being done in real time, so it's going to recalculate. It should come back to 4.65. It does. Okay. Now, as we move on, you can see your top 10 vulnerabilities. These are your top 10 reports. And these are your top 10 vulnerable assets. Again, you get to see where these vulnerabilities are. You got an end of life obsolete software. You've got a Java JMX server and secure configuration. You can see the severity they have. Obviously, they're critical. Um, you would hope that your most critical are there unless uh, you know, you're know you in great shape and you have some that are high. But uh, for the most part, these should be reading the way they look. And then you can see the assets. So you can see the order system here and the vulnerability counts based on the different things that are, are um, being shown today. But these are the top 10 assets with these vulnerabilities. Um, again, you have the ability to dive into that. Explore on the score. Here you can actually see the pre the uh, meter. Um, you actually have the ability here to play with this. You got your critical assets. You can actually see what would happen as you bring these things down, adjust them, see how it might affect your score. I can move the medium down. That did bring that score down some. Bring my hide back. You can see all these different things are impacting the score. And you'd be able to go in and, and you know really get a feel for where we make the adjustments, where we try to do the patches, where do we try to put the policies in place and, and affect these different things and, and shore up our borders, um, how that will affect your score overall. As you can see here, you know, saw 4.65 before, this has is broken out by business unit. We have four samples that we've had, white tigers, blue jays, fast talkers, these decision makers. Our decision makers have more of the vulnerabilities from their business unit and the systems that they're using as compared to say the white tigers. Not a massive difference, but you can at least get a feel for how they look. Um, you even have a risk score against certain systems. Um, here's uh, the order system we saw before. Um, they have, uh, they're scoring a five. Whereas these assets, which I know from uh, looking at this in the past, these are infrastructure tagged assets and where they score from a risk criticality. We now have it broken out into the things you saw when I dove into the pie at the beginning, which is your mobile applications risk. And you'll see the different scores they have here relatively low in the mobile app. This is uh, you know medium for this pharmacy extension. Now we have the web application, Here's the different things, um, top 10 that you're gonna be able to look at with regards to where they sit and be able to drill down into these. This one happens to be in the tool cast the development team using that the development team's using. And over here, again, these tags, which are tagged to infrastructure, you can see the different scores against the infrastructure capabilities. Um, again, we have a snapshot, which lets us take a look at, you know, the different teams. You got the white tie, oh, these are the Blue Jays, I apologize. Um, and this is how they look as a whole. And you can move through the pie and dive into different components there, or let's say the decision makers, where they sit. Uh, from a critical high, um, primarily all infrastructure. And I can click on that again and bring it back to the original and work with all of these different things. This this uh, this is the login name, so Niraj is not an asset. It just happens to be the login name I'm using for this this, uh, 
this demo. Now, if I go back to the dashboard, I want to show you a few more things. It'll reload in just a second. Give me a moment. If I go to people, I can go down to the different campaigns we have. This one happens to be for phishing. You get a feel for what they're doing. Again, we have a campaign ticker at the top. And you just scroll through. Um, you can see the number of clicks permitted, clicks blocked, messages delivered, messages blocked based on the way uh, the security has been put in place, um, which is kind of critical. See total permitted blocked different areas with regards to clicks as well as messages with regards to the, um, monitoring what's actually happening uh, within your enterprise and how it's what's going on. And then we even have a bar chart, which allows you to see exactly you may have ran a campaign or something may have uh, made it through into your system that somebody clicked on. You'll be able to go back and see how that looks up against your time frame right here. We're looking at January through December. So clicks permitted, clicks blocked. So all very, very interesting perspectives of how we look at these. If I go back up into integrations, I think this was a good one. You can see that the, that uh, TAC does have out of the box Qualys capabilities, and we can tap right into your Qualys environment if that's something that you use. They also have it for Fortify, for Proofpoint, uh, and several others. So always adding things that can be integrated into TAC that would uh, allow the data that we're pulling in to be that much more robust. Um, so if you have Fortify, if you have Qualys, if you have Proofpoint, um, those capabilities can be built in and automatically integrated so that this type of data becomes that much more relevant. Um, we have incidents, they're using Securonix. Take a look at the dashboard that they have here. Again, you can see the threat stats that, that this is showing. Again, very colorful at the same time allowing you to see where they would actually come from. Um, also thrown up against the pie, which we can drill down into. We have top violations. You can see what those violations are. It says they've been categorized. You have 19 here, 16 there, um, the dates and what was detected. And you can see the violators. You can actually see um, the users and uh, the assets potentially that are the violators for these types of and ultimately, let me go back to quarterly on this one, you can see an incident trend history. Again, you're gonna have the very similar legend that allows you to actually see what's going on here. At the same time, the mouse over gives you that capability. So you don't always have to refer to the legend, you can use your mouse over to really get a better perspective on what's, hap what's happening there. You can see a, a myriad of reports, ones you can add, you can see a list of those things um, that are out there. We saw a sub component of that in some of the dashboards that you already saw, but here's a list of the various pieces of the infrastructure. I can keep going forward to take a look down to that mobile application list. Um, you know, when scans were done, you can open up a ticket. Again, integration here would be critical, but you can actually have a um, ticket to plug in, um, integrated with your system so that uh, these things move forward and backwards. Notifications, again, these are the notifications that I have going out from who and what they're about. Again, we can drill down into the actions to see what the detail is and ultimately event logs. Here we go. As you can see, Niraj has done quite a bit um, running these different scans and keeping this thing robust. So as a wrap up, ESOF BMP is a very unique, very robust solution. Everything's on one piece of glass for you to be able to drill down in, down into and see. It really gives your vulnerability management 
a, a better perspective. Um, it's not a bunch of paper reports that are 150 pages deep. You can actually go to what you need to look at here and begin drilling down to see what type of activities are in play, what types of vulnerabilities are actually um, need to be addressed, um, what is the current posture of the enterprise. So very unique, very strategic, very robust. I, I know I've said that many times, but this is real true innovation that I think is a difference maker in the marketplace and something that we'd be more than willing to showcase and demo for your team. Uh, with that being said, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. And thank you very much for your time.